you all fell for this. The correct way to do it is like this. So back by popular demand, we've got another video showing you 100 ways to fail a driving test and how to fix them. So we've got this one, which is the emergency stop and pressing the clutch before the brake. Now this is something that people can fail for and I'll show you how to do the wrong way then I'll show you how to do the correct way. So if you've been given an, ex an emergency stop and then the examiner says to you, stop, and then you press the clutch first and then brake afterwards, you see how much time it took for me to stop. The car traveled quite a way first before I actually stopped because I pressed the clutch down. The car coasted for a bit and then it stopped. You all fell for this. The correct way to do it is like this. So the examiner tells you to stop. You're gonna brake and clutch together that way the car stops straight away. It's a bit violent in the car. Things get thrown around, which is what you want. The car stops immediately because remember, it's an emergency stop and you're trying to stop before you hit somebody in front of you. That's what you need to imagine. And then once you've stopped, you secure the car and then take a little breather. The examiner then will tell you to drive on again, in which case you're going to get the car prepared by going into gear. Do your checks first before you drive on. If anybody's going past you, you let them go past. Do your checks over your shoulders too and once it's safe you drive on again and this one is stopping too far past the giveaway line i'll show you how to fix that so stopping too far past the giveaway line can be really dangerous especially like on a junction like this i'm not going to do it obviously but i'm going to do it properly just i'm just showing you stopping on the giveaway line over the giveaway line here will be very dangerous because there's lots of cars going past at quite high speeds so as i'm approaching this junction here if i stop too far over the over the giveaway line like this right now i can see it's safe but if i stop somewhere like here this could be dangerous if i was in a different kind of road and cars are going past me they could easily hit the front of my car or i could get in the way and make them swerve and then crash into somebody else now you can easily avoid this by using a reference point and i'll show you what i mean so this time as i approach the giveaway line i'm going to be looking at the the wing mirror and as you can see there the line on that side is underneath my wing mirror which means now I'm not going too far forward and I've also not too far back. And if I still can't see, then I'll start creeping forward a bit and checking left and right. But before then, I make sure that um, my giveaway line is, is that that line is just underneath the wing mirror and that way I'm not too far over or too far back. Then we've got this one here, stopping dangerously for orange lights or amber lights. This is something that happens at traffic lights. I'm going to show you how to avoid it. So this is a fault that usually happens because people haven't planned their head properly. Now, see this light here? If it's, it's a pedestrian crossing, so I know it's not going to go red anytime soon unless somebody presses it, unless somebody's hanging around. But I'm always thinking about when I would stop. If it changes at that point there, I can stop. If, if I go beyond this point, then it changes. I'm not going to stop. So I'm already planning ahead. If I go beyond a certain point, even if it changes to amber, I'm not going to stop. That way, it minimizes the risk of me slamming my brakes when I see it change. So like this light, for instance, as I approach it now, I'm thinking about when it's gonna change, but right now it's changing nice and early, so I don't need to worry about it too much. But if it changes, I got closer. Before I got there, I already would have made up my mind about whether I'm gonna stop or not. You don't wanna be making up your mind about stopping at an amber light as it changes. You should already know whether you're gonna stop or not. So where your point of no return is, it also depends on your speed. So right now I'm not going that fast. So if the lights change now, I can still stop. But once it changes now, I'm not going to stop because it'll be too late by then. And also, before you stop, you need to really be careful and check your center mirror. That will help you as well to decide whether it's worth stopping or whether it's safe stopping or not. And sometimes it might be best just to carry on. So we've got this one, not stopping for passing vehicles. And this is when you're doing a maneuver. I'll show you how to avoid that. So let's say you've been asked to do a right reverse on this road here and then get your car ready and then you start doing your checks if you were to move now while these cars are really close like that this could be a fail what you need to do is make sure you stop for them let them go past first do your checks and then start reversing again when it's safe like this but keep checking everywhere and then this car when it gets closer to me i'm gonna stop again so i've made like an like an imaginary circle around the car so the circle will start somewhere like where that uh, sign for where that road starts so there, anybody that gets into that space, I'll stop. And also behind me as well. If anybody gets close, I'll stop and go. Because this road is quite narrow. If it was a wider road, I wouldn't worry too much about those cars on that side. But because it's quite narrow, I'm going to worry about both sides. And then stop for anybody that's nearby while checking everywhere. Cyclists as well, you want to make sure you're stopping for them. If they're all the way over there, you don't need to worry about them too much. But if they're close to your car, you should definitely stop for them. 
that way you avoid that fall. So we've got this one that says, not stopping for pedestrians that are on the pavement as you turn left from a main road to a side road. So this is a new rule introduced by the highway code changes which happened sometime last year. So what you're supposed to do now is stop for pedestrians that are waiting to cross by a junction as you turn in. You don't want to stop for them though if you're coming off like a dual carriageway or if you're going to cause a danger for anybody else. Uh, so far I haven't seen anybody fell for this yet but it's something to look out for. If you're about to turn into a side road and the people are waiting to cross on the edge of there, be careful and let them cross if you can stop safely. If it's not safe for you to stop for whatever reason, maybe because you're coming off a high speed road like a dual carriageway, then you should carry on. I spoke to some examiners about this. The way the market is, they will need to put themselves in the shoes of the learner and think, what would they do in that, in that situation? What would they do if they were driving? So it's not so black and white like roundabouts or zebra crossings. It's a bit depending on what the examiner thinks of the situation. So just be wary that whenever you're turning into a side road and the pedestrians are waiting, you need to let them cross.